I think this is gonna taste sensational. Everybody, it's Barry here. Hope you are well wherever you are in the world. Welcome uh, to our kitchen and today we are attempting something that sounds disgusting but it's probably, I'm gonna like put my name on the line here, I think this is gonna taste sensational. So you're gonna make a, a chocolate cake and who doesn't like chocolate cake on a miserable day like today? But this is a chocolate mayonnaise cake, right? Classic chocolate cake recipe, it's got your eggs and butter in it, but we omit that, okay? So the oils from the mayonnaise, kind of like a carrot cake vibe, that's what I'm going for. Oh, love a moist cake. That is what is supposed to result in a super moist chocolate cake. The mayonnaise replaces the eggs and the butter. I don't know if this is gonna work. Plot twist, Amy. We are making the mayonnaise from scratch. Yeah. So if this does fail with all the enhancements that a store-bought mayonnaise would get versus the freshness of my own one, we can always just try again tomorrow, can't we? But come on, this is how you make your own homemade mayonnaise. Homemade mayonnaise, we have got a little bit of salt. We have got three egg yolks. These are some fresh eggs at room temperature. Got a lemon, mustard, which I'll come on to in just a moment. And 300 ml of vegetable oil. Look at that. That's why I've done this. There's a whole reason for this camera angle because I wanted you to just see this oil spill, all right? Mary looks so innocent, but look at all that. That's going in our cake, yeah. So yeah, with the mustard, we're using Dijon mustard, a little bit of a kick, but we only use a teaspoon. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, I feel like the chocolate is gonna mask it anyway. And apparently the mustard does help stabilize it. You can use mustard powder as well. And again, there are alternatives, but I just wanna try and give this the best chance I can. All right, so like Back to the Future, this is your yum capacitor, all right? I've just realized the amount of oil I've got is too much for this. Let's do it old school, let's do manual. Let's do it for the rustics. Let's do it for the Betty Crockers out there. Let's whisk. It's a whisk worth taking and I've used that pun way too many times. So we can get the mustard on the go too. So just a teaspoon of that goes in there. Ooh. Ugh. That wakes you up in the morning. I've just done about like 20 seconds of whisking there. And now this is the important bit and a word I'm probably gonna get wrong. The word in my head is emulsification. What we wanna do is slowly add in the oil, but it must be done, which is where the food processor comes in really well. You don't wanna pour it all in in one go. We wanna whisk it as we add it. And you can see slightly the texture of the mix is changing. Oil in the stream, mayo in my bowl. Gonna put it in a cake, might be a fail. For reference, if you could see my face, it's like when I drive my car and I stick my tongue out, I'm going Ugh. Once you're at this stage, this is where you can add your enhancements. So a little bit of salt. Lemon. Oh, it's thickening, it's thickening folks, look at that. Amazing. That. That is mayo, and this is exactly the same weight of bowl on my scales, that is 800 grams. This is a really weird way to do it, but you know I need 200. We need to be over a kilo. Boom, chicka, wow, wow. See that? That is some blooming fresh mayo. To be fair, that wasn't actually too hard making it from scratch, even with a hand whisk, was it? Or well, of course, you can just buy some from the shop. Now, did I say at the start of this video there are no eggs and no butter in this recipe? The mayonnaise replaces the eggs and the butter. Well, you know what I mean when I say no eggs. You, when you buy a jar of mayo, of course, most of you probably go, oh, there's eggs in that, but some of you might not know how mayonnaise is made. So that's why I was like, yeah, no egg. Yeah, just give me some slack. We're gonna make the cake batter now. We've got some baking powder, cocoa powder, sugar, vanilla extract, and some self-raising flour. We also need mayonnaise, which of course we know we have made in the fridge uh, right now. We didn't make it in the fridge, but it's in the fridge. <laughs> Duh. This is a kettle. This is our new kettle. It's a transparent kettle. I don't wanna rock the boat, baby, but uh, when you have a transparent kettle, it does look cool, but I'm telling you now, you end up cleaning it more than you do using it. <laughs> it's just like you can see everything. Oh, magical colors. I <laughs> saw some reviews where people were complaining about condensation. I'm just like, oh my gosh. If that's all you have to worry about, it's glass, come on. Freshly boiled water. All right, just under 250. Uh, we're gonna add some vanilla extract into this and also our cocoa powder, all right? 
a big old bowl again, self-raising flour, caster sugar, and baking powder. This is the mayonnaise that I just weighed out off camera. Oh, actually, no, I haven't tasted it yet. Ooh, fresh. We're just gonna mix this all through, okay? Actually, come on down, because this is quite cool. Come on down. Here we go. Oh, it's starting to look quite battery already, isn't it? And remember, this is a chocolate cake. <laughs> We're gonna add the chocolate mix in, so vanilla, chocolate, warm water. And hopefully, this will look, <laughs> oh my gosh, like some sort of chocolate cake in a minute. But just to make sure I'm really happy and that it's oh, lump free, I'm really going to town on it, okay? We've gone so far. Yes. Happy with that. Look. Ooh, it's mayo in that. Oh, this has all gone so swimmingly that I haven't actually like preheated my oven yet or lined uh, my cake tins. I'm just gonna do two small uh, round ones so I can bake on the same shelf, same time. And we might even shove a buttercream in there. There probably is a mayo buttercream, but I don't wanna do that today. I've spent the last 15 minutes whilst the oven preheated trying to line our two cake tins. Turns out the round cake tins we have in our house at the moment are just the spring form ones and I'm really worried that with this batter being a little bit thinner, that with it being a loose bottom tin, <laughs> I could like bake it and it all fall out in the bottom of my oven. I sort of say that as if that's never happened to me before. Enough space for two and it actually bakes for 35 to 40 minutes. See you later. Whilst that's in there baking away, I'm actually just gonna tidy up because if I make the buttercream now, I know what I'll do. I'll have the buttercream ready. We've probably all been there. The cakes are ready and then you just start frosting it whilst it's like warm and the cake just goes bleh and melts all the buttercream. So when the cake sponges are cooling, that is when I'll make the chocolate filling. Ooh, of course the other thing it means, I can keep my eye on it. All right, both the cakes. Well, I think they're done. I tested one of them. I couldn't find a bamboo skewer, so I've just used a knife, put it in there, and it's come out clean. Other one. Yeah. The smell is so rich. It smells, I mean, it's basically still a chocolate cake, right? I'm genuinely really impressed by that. Obviously, we don't know if it tastes any good yet, and if it's moist, I wanna let it cool down fully in the tin. So that's what's gonna happen while I make that buttercream. I don't often show my lantern, but it is miserable. If you're wondering what that is, that's a little mask to help my uh, terrible internet. All right, so we've got some butter and I left that at room temperature, but because it's quite cool in here today, it's not really as soft as I'd like. And this is, yeah, that's 100% left on turbo. <laughs> Whenever Mrs. B uses this, she always leaves it on turbo and it catches me up, like, especially with the ice and sugar. So I'm gonna beat this on its own, first of all. All right, so it's a little softer. Speaking of the uh, transparent kettle, I found a transparent stand mixer because I really want to get one. It makes amazing buttercream. I started reading the reviews of that and it was like, I was making a cake and the bowl shattered and it doesn't scrape the sides. I was like, oh, that'd be amazing for videos because you could see through it. I might get it anyway because it's on sale, but I wonder why. <laughs> so I'm trying to add the icing sugar a little bit at a time to avoid, see that cloud that came up? It might happen now, I'll turn it down again, hang on. All right, that's not too bad. We've seen it much worse. And if any of you are wondering about the uh, putting a slight bit of mustard in the mayo, I really wasn't worried about that. <coughs> what? Uh, ice and sugar. Because I remember I did that ketchup and mustard cake. That ice is disgusting. It's mustard, how dare you? That was a bit weird. So I'm gonna add in the cocoa powder and then initially, about two tablespoons of milk. I might need a bit more, but we'll just do it in batches, all right? Ooh. All right, I shoved these in my garage to cool down quick and it did not disappoint. Nice and cool, let's stack it. Okie dokie. <laughs> well, it's a chocolate cake, isn't it? I'm blooming chuffed with that. <laughs> right. I guess I better have a slice. Folks, that may look like, why the heck am I recording this? <laughs> may look like a chocolate cake, but this is my new video, it's just gone up right now. This is a chocolate mayonnaise cake, okay? The sponge has mayonnaise in it, homemade mayo, check it out.
Uh, you might have just heard me do an Instagram story. <laughs> Whenever I put up a new video, if you don't get notifications on YouTube, do check my Instagram as well, because whenever I put a new one up, I'll uh, stick a story up. Let's have a slice. Ooh, it's got a good crust on it, I will say that. Oh, <laughs> It's a teeny bit crummy, but that's not what I was thinking. Oh. I tell you what, that is nowhere near as moist as I thought it would be, actually. I'm going to try a bit of the cake on its own. The, I was a bit worried. I thought, because the crust there, I thought, oh, no, this is going to be really, really dry. It's not like ca carrot cake level of moisture, but you can kind of taste the oiliness in it. There's, there's not an eggy vibe, but there's almost like a, an enhanced creaminess to it. It's like a creamy chocolate cake. Oh, my gosh. But it melts in your mouth as well. Oh, that is so good. <laughs> that is really, really good. Genuinely, I would 100, 100, 100% make that again. That is blooming stonking. Quite fun to make the homemade mayonnaise, but if I didn't do that, that would have been a super, super quick recipe. And it's just, it's an, almost like a different depth to it. I really, really would like it if you give this a try. And if you do, don't forget to send me a photo on your social media platform of choice. Subscribe for regular videos and food fun. Hope you enjoyed the video. Any cool ideas you've seen in the world of food, do let me know down below. And I'll see you again next time. Bye. Got all the notes, baby, like a treble clef. Cooking up this song like the naked chef. I know what you're thinking, British guy drinking tea, but I'm gangster British, baby. I prefer chickpeas. Thinking about it, have we just made like basically a posh cake mix? Because when you buy those cake mixes, it's just like add oil and an egg, and there is an oily moisture to it, and they actually sometimes taste pretty darn good, especially the Cretty Bocker ones. But because we've kind of done it through the power of mayonnaise and whisked it all like that, maybe we've like added a creaminess to it, and that's probably why there is such a high, strong, creamy, chocolatey, moisture goodness in there. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it just tastes like normal chocolate cake. Yeah? Yeah, it's really, really nice, really light and springy. <laughs> Thank you.